Hey there, everybody. Pete here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to Ranking the Albums. Today, we're going to take a look at uh, a very cool band that actually wasn't around for too long. Just a couple of years. Produced a couple of pretty good albums, though. Um, we're talking about the Henry Paul Band. You might have heard that name before. Of course, Henry Paul was one of the original members of the Outlaws, Southern Rock Legends. Okay, Henry uh, Singer guitar player, songwriter, after leaving the Outlaws in the late 70s, formed the Henry Paul Band, basically in the spirit of the Outlaws, did that for a couple of years, then ventured straight into country music with his uh, own band, Black Hawk, right, then went back to the Outlaws, left the Outlaws, and, and now has been once again at the, uh, the helm of the Outlaws since the passing of Huey Thompson, and uh, he has been the mainstay in the Outlaws for the last bunch of years. So uh, started with the Outlaws, ended with the Outlaws, all sorts of stuff in the middle. We're going to take a look at some of that middle stuff today. So the Henry Paul Band, technically they have four albums. One of these albums was always just called a Henry Paul album, uh, but most people just kind of lump it in with this, the Henry Paul Band, because it's a lot of the same guys, and it's, you know, Henry is the leader of the band, so whether it's just called Henry Paul or Henry Paul Band, same thing, right? So we got four albums here. Uh, we're looking 1979 to 1982, so not a lot of years. They squeeze four albums into, um, into three years, and we're going to go from my least favorite of the four to my favorite. So we're going to start off here uh, with the final album from 1982, just called uh, Henry Paul. All right, there he is on the cover. All right, 1982, produced by Pete, Peter Solly. Uh, in the band at the time, you got Henry Paul on lead vocals, no guitar on this album. Uh, you got Wally Dents on bass guitar, Billy Crane on rhythm and all lead guitars, Billy a mainstay in uh, this band from the start. Uh, Bill Hoffman on drums, Tom Capek on keyboards, and uh, David Feister on uh, rhythm guitar and a little bit of lead guitar as well. You had some guest musicians, Valerie Carter on lead vocals on one track. Uh, Huey Thomason, his old buddy from The Outlaws, plays uh, guitar solo on one track. Uh, John Sambataro and Chuck Kirkpatrick, additional backing vocals. Uh, George Terry on acoustic guitars. And Peter Solly, the producer on additional keyboards. So this is, uh, as you can imagine, 1982. What did a lot of Southern rock bands do in 19, you know, once 81, 82, 83, 84 came around? They kind of got away from their uh, traditional sound, which is, you know, hard charging, you know, twin guitars, slide guitars, raunchy, you know, uh, Southern style rock with little bits of country and, <clears throat> you know, whatever else thrown in, a little bit of blues, a little bit of jazz here and there, a little bit of pop. It's what a lot of the Southern rock bands did. Uh, and then once they got into the 80s, of course, all these synthesizers and drum programming and all that kind of stuff, you know the drill. So many bands fell into that trap. I mean, you know, Molly Hatchet, 38 Special, uh, Doc Holliday. Uh, we can go on and on with all the Southern rock bands that kind of went that route. Henry Paul Band, exactly the same. So... A lot of hard rock guitars on this album, but a lot of synths. And there's most of like what we recognize as Southern Rock kind of gone by this point. But, you know, some decent tracks on here. Uh, Nighttime, which is the kickoff track. Rocks, good, good rocking tune. Again, it's, I don't know how Southern Rock it is, but it's, uh, it's a good rocking song for 1982. Think of some of like 38 Specials, more commercial stuff, right? Uh, Hold On. Total 80s cheese. I'm not a big fan of that song at all. You got Kamikaze Rock is kind of like their take on 80s, kind of like uh, big and riffy boogie type of thing. Uh, you got Desiree, which, uh, and you know, you got some outside writers and things on this album too, which is kind of weird. Uh, Desiree kind of sounds like Rick Springfield meets like uh, Billy Squire. Kind of not what you want to hear from the Henry Paul band, but you know, it's okay. Uh, Circle of Silence uh, might be one of the only two or three songs on here that really resemble classic Southern rock. Um, pretty good song, all right? Then you got uh, Cold War, which is the very last song. So really the two best songs on here, Circle of Silence and Cold War at the back end of the album. Those are easily the best songs on the album. Cold War is good. Got some nice, you know, like Hammond organ tones. Uh, really great Henry Paul vocals on here. Uh, big riffs. Cool guitar solo in it. Uh, it's a really strong song, and, and I'd say that is the best song on the album, save for last. But much of this album is just drenched in horrible 80s synths 
not even really remotely Southern Rock other than a track or two or three. And this would be the last we would see of the Henry Paul band. So that's my number four. Coming in at number three is going to be their third album called Anytime from 1981. All right, you guys got their little, little classic red uh, hot rod there. Got a cool, um, cool pick of the guys. I always love the live shots, right? So uh, here, let's uh, see if I get you the lineup real quick. Henry Paul, once again, leading backing vocals, rhythm guitar. You got David uh, Feister on lead guitar. Uh, you got Billy Crane on uh, lead and rhythm guitar, Bill Hoffman on drums, and Wally Dent on bass. And then you got a bunch of guest stars. Uh, you got uh, Barry Rapp on organ, uh, Joe Lala on percussion, uh, High Winding on piano, Michael Boddicker on synthesizers, Bill Champlin, Tom Kelly, and Richard Page on backing vocals. Yes, that Bill Champlin, of course, from Chicago fame. So here on uh, Anytime, <clears throat> very commercial sounding. Still, you know, this band always had, and that's, you know, Henry Paul, a great writer of hooks. This guy knows how to write a catchy song, whether it's a more rockin' tune or a more kind of pop country type of thing, country rock. This guy really knows how to write a really memorable song. A uh, lot of strong guitar work. This band has always had some really tasty guitar work. Uh, Living Without Your Love is a kickoff track. That uh, should have been like the big hit on this album. In fact, I'm pretty sure that was released as a single. That's like a just a typical like late 70s, early 80s kind of like southern rock pop hit you know along the lines of 38 special the more commercial outlaw stuff that sort of thing great chorus real catchy song uh hollywood paradise good good hard rocker strong vocals a lot of really sizzling guitar solos in that one uh keeping our love alive another radio friendly kind of country rock pop uh ballad again it's a cool song not one of my favorites but it's cool uh anytime Good, radio-friendly uh, rock song, loads of hooks. Uh, Crazy Eyes I dig a lot. That's kind of like a darker rocker. Some really tasty guitar leads uh, and a really passionate vocal from Henry. Dig that one. Uh, you got the totally unnecessary cover of uh, Brown Eyed Girl, which, I mean, come on. Give us another original song. We, I mean, everybody does that song. It's like we don't need these guys to do it as well. Uh, Rising Star in the Southern Sky is great. Again, uh, another kind of late in the album gem uh, here on this particular one. Uh, reminds me a lot of the album that came before, which we're going to talk a little bit. Uh, good, heavy Southern rocker. Love that. And then you got uh, Distant Riders, which is the last song on the album. Pretty cool also. Kind of like mid-paced Southern Rock Anthem. I dig that. Uh, you also have a 766-2623 Romance, which is kind of kind of silly but kind of fun. Uh, but overall, it's it's a spotty album with some real commercial stuff and a couple of strong you know Southern Rock tunes. It's not terrible. It's not, I wouldn't even say it's very good. It's decent enough. Um, not awful, but you know, definitely at the, the lower rung of the four albums. Now we get into the really good stuff. So their first two albums are pretty spectacular. <clears throat> and I had a hard time with um, which one should be one or which one should be two. And I have like changed my tune over the years on these two albums because they're both really enjoyable. And some days I'm just kind of more, <clears throat> more closely aligned with one than the other. But over the last week, as I've been kind of listening to these and getting these ready, uh, I kind of decided to go a different way that I would have, like maybe if you asked me this last year, right? So number two, I'm going to go with their debut, Grey Ghost, from 1979. It's a really good album. This is, you know, he leaves the Outlaws and puts this album out, and it's just like a continuation of the Outlaws, but with him, you know, kind of at the forefront on everything so you got uh henry on guitars and vocals you got jim fish on lead guitars and vocals billy crane on lead guitar you know like i said a mainstay throughout this whole uh the whole history of this band uh barry rap on keyboards and vocals wally dents on bass harmonica vocals bill hoffman on drums and joe lala on percussion so uh really good debut you know, the first song that leads off the album is called so long great great track really great track Lots of just absolutely incredible guitar solos. Um, just a really good song. Great chorus, really memorable. You know, if you didn't know any better, <clears throat> you would swear that it was an outlaw song off their first couple albums. It's that good. It just it, The formula is exactly the same. Uh, you got uh, Crossfire, which is the second track. 
Really catchy, soft rock song. Uh, really cool slide guitar solo. I like that one a lot. Uh, you got Grey Ghost, the title track, which is uh, just an absolute southern rock anthem. You know, with the big guitar solos and du dueling guitar solos and just the, the lush arrangements and great vocal harmonies. Just an amazing song. And another, you know, proof positive of just what a great singer that uh, Henry Paul uh, is. Uh, let's see, what else we got here? I Don't Need You No More, cool, jazzy, like, Almond Brothers Band vibe. You know, kind of like that one quite a bit, too. Uh, Lonely Dream uh, is classic outlaw-style country rock. Uh, One Night Stand is a big, kind of, like, upbeat southern boogie track. Uh, it's got slide guitar and horns and just really fun song. And then uh, you got You Really Know What I Mean, which is uh, really, really catchy with some good hooks. So all in all, just a really good, fun album. Great melodies, very listenable, and most importantly, tremendous guitar work. I mean, the, the, you know, this band and the Outlaws, too. I mean, just, um, and you know, you had a, a couple of guys from this band actually wound up being in the Outlaws years later as well. <clears throat> so here, uh, I'm going to go as my favorite, number one, with 1980s Feel the Heat, band's second album. This is, without a doubt, uh, their heaviest album, their, their hardest rocking album. And here you got, uh, again, Henry Paul, guitars and vocals. Billy Crane, once again, lead and slide guitars. David Feister on uh, lead and slide guitars and vocals. Barry Rapp on keyboards and vocals. Uh, Wally Dents on bass and harmonica. Bill Hoffman on drums and Monty Yoho. Yes, that Monty Yoho from the Outlaws on drums with Joe Lala, Joe Vitale, you know, yep, of course, that Joe Vitale, uh, Joe Lala on percussion, Joe Vitale on synths, uh, John Matthias or Matthias on synthesizers, and Jim Fish and Valerie Wilson on backing vocals. So the big difference with this album is you got uh, a good chunk of the band now are taking turns singing lead vocals. So this is not purely uh, Henry singing the entire album, which gives it a little different flavor in spots. All right. Uh, like I said, this is heavier than the debut. You got the the title track, which has some great riffs, a lot of cool wah wah guitar in it. Uh, the vocals are amazing, smoking, smoking guitar solos. Uh, you got whiskey talking, which is this big kind of like Molly Hatcher, Leonard Skinner style, you know, heavy southern rocker. Really good, amazing lead and slide guitars in this song. You got running away, which has got the big hooks, mix of like southern rock and pop. Great track. Turn It Up, also pretty heavy. Great guitar riffs, some organ. Uh, Go Down Rockin', also good, memorable hard rocker with a killer hook. Uh, you got Long Shot, which is a good commercial kind of tune. Again, that reminds me a little bit of kind of like the, the more, you know, the really memorable radio-friendly stuff from uh, 38 Special. Uh, Night City also rocks really hard. That also has a 38 Special vibe to it. Uh, I Can See It is another really catchy rocker with a tremendous uh, slide guitar solo. I, I, I love like cool slide guitar solos, you know, especially in this, the kind of like Southern rock uh, framework. Shot to Hell, another really good song on here. Also uh, kind of reminds me of the aggressive stuff from Molly Hatchet and Leonard Skinner. Uh, and, and like I mentioned, you got a bunch of the guys singing lead vocals. So you, you can hear every song, you know, when it's not Henry, Henry's got a very mistake, a very unmistakable voice. And you can tell when someone else is doing the lead vocals, but they all pull it off really well. It's just a really good cranking Southern rock album. And it's my choice as number one. So I'm going to go with that one as my favorite of the four, followed by Grey Ghost, the debut. And like I said, those two were pretty much neck and neck. Number three is going to be Anytime. And number four is the Henry Paul self-titled album. So there you have it. I mean, uh, these are well worth having. If you're a Southern Rock fan and you don't have these, I would do whatever you can do to get them. Uh, these were all, at, at some point, I've had these forever, but these were reissued on Wounded Bird Records. Uh, if you can find them, get them. I don't know if they've been reissued or remastered since. Uh, but uh, like I said, I've had them for quite a while, and uh, I've listened to these a ton. Uh, really, really good band, uh, you know. But again, I, I dig southern rock, so that. Uh, but just I, I love. I'm a sucker for southern rock bands who have just wonderful vocal harmonies, melodies, and hooks, and scorching guitar work. All right, even if some of the stuff is a little on the mellow side, as long as you got all those elements, it works for me. And I think uh, these are some pretty fine albums from, uh, you know, a very important guy. Ironically enough. Henry Paul was not born in the South. He was born in Kingston, New York, which is literally like 20 minutes from where I live. 
All right, but then when he was really young, they relocated to Florida. So he is he's a Southern boy because uh, he grew up down South, but he was actually born here in New York. Very strange, right? So uh, visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. Of course, we're on YouTube all the damn time. Coming up over the next couple of days, uh, we've got uh, more of these Ranking the Album shows coming up. Uh, you're going to start seeing more of them over the next week or so. Uh, we've got... Uh, Chuck Alvarez and myself are going to be ranking the catalog of Jazz Fusion Legends Weather Report. I've got uh, a really cool one coming up. I know we got a lot of Doom fans here watching the channel, so I'm going to be doing. Uh, I'm going to rank the albums of Saint Vitus. Uh, I don't have it scheduled yet, but I know I'm going to desperately try to get to Fleetwood Mac this month, the whole catalog. Uh, I'm also going to be getting together with a couple other folks to do uh, Immortal Black Metal Legends as well as uh, Immolation death metal pioneers right so and plus all sorts of other stuff we got uh for all you fusion fans uh, george lemmy and i are going to rank the catalog of uh, tribal tech scott henderson gary willis and company what a great fusion band if you've never heard them uh you'll you'll be in for a treat with that one in addition all sorts of other stuff happening here. We got some cool interviews coming up. We got Ciro Perino from Italian prog legend Celeste coming up this weekend. We've got next week, we've got uh, Arjen Lucasen from Arion and Star One coming up on the channel as well. We've got Hudson Valley Squares in the prog seat. We've got uh, album reviews from, you know, the latest from Cactus and District 97 and Steve Gadd Band and all, all sorts of other stuff. John Anderson reissues, Blasphemous Creation, Fernando Perdomo, all sorts of new stuff. Uh, I mean, i got this huge stack of stuff I need to get to. So that's all coming up in the days and weeks ahead. So stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe. Please click on that subscribe button. If you haven't, click on the little bell so you get notified of all the videos we produce. If you want to make a donation to the channel, please click on the Ko-Fi link in the video description below. There's also a link below for our merch page if you're interested in a sea of tranquility hoodie or t-shirt or hat or cap or sticker or coffee mug or whatever we get all the fun stuff so uh we'll see you guys real soon all right so take care have a good one bye-bye